Okay, moving now to oriental fruit moth, which is the nominal, really the key pest in uh, insect pest in peaches. Uh, this is a, a tortricid moth. The adult is rather small and um, gray and mottled and fairly in, indistinctive. Um, but uh, it flies uh, starting early in the season, uh, uh, late April to early May, and um, they lay their eggs singly uh, on or near uh, the fruits or the fruit buds and uh, the insect uh, larvae uh, when they hatch uh, they initially in the first generation they initially go after uh, the terminals the growing terminals and they tunnel inside uh, and, and have this kind of a hollowed out effect uh, on the shoots uh, which causes the, the leaves on the shoot to flag now this isn't necessarily a direct um, threat or compromise to the to the, the fruit crop uh, at this point but it is a good indication that you have a, a population present that's going to need some management and and most orchards do require some management of oriental fruit moth here's a photo of uh, the uh, early stage larvae larva uh, as it uh, uh, develops it, it burrows into the flesh and it causes this uh, nasty uh, kind of damage that gums gums up and uh, uh, causes uh, unacceptable damage uh, basically to the to the fruit flesh um, by the time you get to the second generation the second flight of uh, oriental fruit moth this can occur generally about early July uh, they start going after the newly developing fruits and, and they will uh, bore into the side and begin feeding and you can uh, easily tell that you have an infested fruit because you get this nasty damage um, uh, with the uh, the gum and the frass uh, coming out of the wound uh, and uh, by the time you get to the, you know the, the fruit later in development closer to harvest the damage is, is even more apparent uh, with uh, very unacceptable um, uh, wounds and uh, injury sites all over the fruits. So, uh, treatment options, management options. Well, the first thing you, you really would like to do is uh, get some pheromone traps out there and monitor for that first adult flight of the season because this allows you to sort of set the developmental clock uh, in your area to, to, to determine what's going on uh, with uh, the insect. Uh, and as I said, this tends to occur certainly in, in Western New York, late April or early May. Looks like we're going to have kind of an early spring this year. So I'm expecting the first o o OFM moth to, uh, to probably be trapped uh, the, the last week of April, give or take. And you note this biofix date because this is going to be of use to you in a second. But what you want to do is uh, one of the treatment options that's available to you, and I would recommend that you take advantage of it, is uh, pheromone mating disruption especially, particularly if you have a fairly good sized planting. Now we like to see uh, orchards of a, about 10 acres uh, in order for mating disruption to work optimally. Um, many people don't have uh, that large a, a planting, but even, even five acres, uh, it's, it's worth the effort to put out mating disruption uh, because oriental fruit moth is very sensitive to its uh, mating pheromone, its sex pheromone, and uh, it's one of those insects that you can really um, make a, a great uh, uh, improvement to your management program by using um, mating disruption as a component. So uh, it's good to have your, your uh, pheromone uh, products, dispensers out there by the time you get this, th this first uh, flight starting. And we have a number of products available. Uh, there's the isomate uh, ties. Uh, the ones that I would recommend are these twin tube ties. Um, Isomate uh, CM OFM TT twin tube. Um, Isomate makes an OFM twin tube uh, product, but it's really not uh, available for sale in New York. The, their distribution um, decision was that they were only going to distribute the coddling moth OFM um, combo in New York, but it's actually not a bad idea to, uh, to use this one anyway because coddling moth does also attack. Uh, peaches and so um, 
this is uh, this is a way of addressing both pests, um, even though Catamol is fairly a, a minor pest in peaches of New York. But at any rate, uh, the OFM component is makes it worth it anyway. And these go out at 200 per acre. Uh, recently, as as early as uh, last year or a couple of years ago, uh, Trace has released a, a a newer product called Sidetrack, which is a meso. Uh, so-called meso dispenser, which means uh, it goes out at much lower densities. Uh, not instead of 200 per acre, you only need between 18 and 36 per acre. And these are somewhat larger. This uh, can't tell from the picture, but it's a it's about a six-inch long black strap, as I would say, uh, that you hang in the tree. And it's uh, because it, it goes out at such lower numbers, uh, it's much easier to deploy. Uh, additionally. Uh, there is a sprayable option for oriental fruit moth, and we generally don't recommend sprayables uh, for mating disruption, except for this species, oriental fruit moth, just because it is so sensitive and so easy to disrupt. Um, a sprayable formulation, especially if you don't have a particularly rainy period, is obviously very easy uh, to apply, to make, put it into your tank and uh, spray it out as you would any crop protectant. Uh, so this Checkmate Sprayable OFM F is available and it can be used. And then I just would mention because it may be applicable in some cases, if you have a large planting, uh, 15 or 20 acres uh, in minimum, and this doesn't apply to most people, but there could be some uh, operations of this size in the state. Uh, we have these aerosol, so-called puffer uh, type of dispensers, uh, which go out at one to two per acre. So because they go out at such low densities, uh, we really need uh, a big planting. So we have a checkmate puffer, which looks like a big elongated birdhouse. And uh, there's another product from Isomate called the CMOFM Mist. And these basically are uh, uh, automated dispensers that you, you hang up. Uh, at the beginning of the season and uh, on, based on a timer system and uh, battery powered, they, they will last uh, throughout the, the entire season. So anyway, this is one good component of a, a OFM management program. Um, now, as for, usually you need something in addition to uh, mating disruption for uh, OFM. Uh, a, a good chemical uh, pesticide program is uh, very useful and usually necessary. Um, and so uh, at Petal Fall, you use that biofix date that you, uh, that you were so attentive in, in recording earlier on. And uh, you can, you, using that date, you can calculate uh, when to time your sprays for that first larval generation. Now, unlike in apples, oriental fruit moth develops a little bit quicker and we don't have an, a specific uh, pest prediction model for oriental fruit moth, but we do have a degree day calculator in NUA that you can use to time the sprays. Um, and what you're looking for is uh, something in this area between 170 and 200 degree days, base 45, which is a unique developmental base, but base 45, that many degree days from the biofix, and it generally corresponds to about a 10% uh, hatch of the, of the first generation larvae, because that's the time you want to target for sprays. Um, for first brood, this tends to occur sometime between petal fall and shuck split uh, of peaches. If you haven't used the degree day calculator in NUA, uh, this is what it looks like. You go to the NUA page and under weather data, you go down here, and you'll see a, uh, a, a, an option for degree day calculator. And then you can chip, choose your uh, station, for instance, Voorheesville, um, and be sure you're on base 45 degree days. And uh, the accumulation start date, for that you enter your biofix, okay? So this, this is where you know, the, the system won't um, uh, make an assumption of when biofix is for you, but if you know or if you've got for information for your own planting or for some uh, uh, nearby uh, location, put that in there and then the current date automatically comes in, let's say you're checking on May 10th, and then when you hit the results, it will give you 
the degree days, the accumulated degree days for that station base 45. And this was from 2019. And you can see that on this date last year, we were at 195 accumulated degree days, which is right in the window when you would want to be uh, thinking about putting on that, uh, that petal fall spray, okay? Um, control options, we have a lot of good uh, products available that you can use during this timing. Imidan, Asale, Delegate, Altacore, XRL. Uh, somewhat less effective, but still can be used, things like Avana or uh, some pyrethroids, okay? Uh, these uh, products that are uh, starred, once again, do double duty because they're also effective against plum curculio, okay? So you put on a spray at that point um, that, the, that the degree day calculator has, uh, has uh, guided you to, and then a second spray 10 to 14 days later. And then additionally, because OFM can be a very serious pest, uh, pest and a big challenge uh, in many orchards. If you have a high risk block, you can incorporate one other component, which is uh, an insect virus. Um, and there are two products out there that are available, uh, Madex uh, and Virusoft. And these are actually nominally uh, coddling moth viruses. Uh, but the, the current formulations that are out there contain an isolate that is additionally effective against Oreo fruit moth. Okay, and so what you do is uh, you spray these uh, two applications per generation that can go in with your insecticide uh, spray. And uh, over time, they're not like a rescue treatment, but over time they create an epidemic of this virus in the orchard, a very timely uh, kind of thing to be talking about at this point. Uh, and over time, it brings down the population, the whole uh, pressure and um, uh, scale of the of the population in your region in in the area of where you've uh, where you've sprayed and so this is something that uh, we, we especially recommend in apples for coddling moth problems but it's equally uh, applicable against or OFM in peaches uh, in summer for the summer generation uh, use uh, the biofix uh, that you've um, uh, are already established for that f first flight and the new degree day calculated to time the sprays for the second larval generation. Now, if you're, if you're, tr if you're trapping for the beginning of the second flight, which most people don't do because it's kind of difficult, you can use that same number of degree days, 170 to 200 after the start of the second flight. But uh, equally, uh, practical is to use that same uh, first flight biofix and just uh, count up to uh, 1150 to 1200 to get the, the proper uh, window for timing your, your second set of sprays. And it's basically the same treatment options as for the first brood. I would recommend that you rotate uh, your, your insecticide products to uh, use uh, something from a different IRAC group just to avoid uh, possibility of resistance. Um, and then additionally, in high risk blocks, you may uh, keep an eye out for um, continued infestations out there and you might need to apply a final spray two weeks before the harvest against uh, late season larvae that could be still feeding in the, in the uh, fruits. All right, so this is, you know, to be sure, it's a challenging pest to manage, but it can be done, and uh, we, do, we do have some good tools for it. Uh, I would just note that if you are using mating disruption, uh, be aware of the fact that if you have your block that's disrupted uh, and it's near some non-disrupted planting of apples, which obviously also have oriental fruit moth populations, um, mated females from those areas, from those blocks, can migrate uh, as far as, uh, oh, a kilometer or two, and they can get into your, uh, into your apples. And varieties that have larger, sorry, they'll get into your peaches. And varieties that have later harvest dates uh, will, will be more susceptible to uh, exposure to infestation. So for instance, if you've got your peaches here that are being disrupted, but right nearby, right next door, say, is a bunch of apples that don't have disruption, you will get movement of uh, mated OFM females, uh, which will get into any of the peaches that you have nearby. Uh, and with the 
the later harvest, uh, harvested varieties suffering the most damage. And I, I'm taking this directly from some field work that I did uh, some years ago where I got this exact result, this, is, this precise outcome, because I did this without realizing that uh, this was going to be happening. And so despite the fact that mating disruption it works quite well against peaches, if you have a, a, a females that are made in someplace else, uh, they can just easily fly in uh, and, and uh, infest your fruits uh, from those areas. 